Section 21 is entitled The Velocity and Acceleration. The first problem we're going to look at is the following. They tell us that our t is 3t comma t minus 1. And they want us to find a of, they give us a point three zero. They want us to find A of three zero and B of three zero. For usually A of A is a function of T and B is a function of T. So I need to plug in T values. I need their, this is an XY I need to find out what t is. Well, this should equal, that's x. That should be 3, and that's y. That should be 0. Well, if t minus 1 is 0, and t is 1. And you know what? 3 times 1 is 3. So t is 1. We want to find v of 1 and a of 1. Well, to get v of t, V of 1, excuse me. If we want to get V of T, you take the derivative of R. The derivative of R is V. Derivative of 3T is 3. Derivative of T minus 1 is 1. It's a constant. V of 1. Wherever I see T, I plug in 1. I get 3. Wherever I see T, if I see T, I plug in 1, and I get 1 back. A of t. You take the derivative of v, you get a. You take the derivative of r, you get v. The derivative of 3, 0. The derivative of 1, 0. Plug 1 in for t. I didn't mean to write that as 0. Wherever I see t, I plug in 1. I'll get 0. Wherever I see t here, I plug in 1, and I get 0. There's my answers. Give you another r of t. I'll give you a point. <coughs> the coordinate point, that is an x and a y point, and I'll ask you to find b and a at that particular point. r of t is given to be t minus sine of t comma 1 minus the cosine of t. And the point is pi comma 2. That means this should be 2 and this should be pi for 1t. The 1t value that would make the x component equal to pi and the y component equal to 2. Well, I'll jump on the second one. That should be negative 1. Not because I know stuff about cosine t, but because I know that 1 minus negative 1 is 2. Cosine of t should be negative 1. That happens when t is pi. And if you consider t minus sine of t, where t is pi, sine of pi is 0. You get back pi. Get back pi. This is equal to pi, which is what I want it to equal, when t happens to be pi. Called the coincident. This implies, that point implies t is pi. Okay, so now we know what t is. Because I have a sneaky feeling when I take the derivative, the t's will not vanish this time. The t will not vanish. Take the derivative of r, get v. Got to take the derivative of r. Get 1 minus cosine t, comma. Take the derivative, get sine t. v of pi is 1 minus cosine of pi, comma, the sine of pi. The sine of pi is 0. The cosine of pi is negative 1. 
Now we all know, oh, anyone who would write down zero here knows like they know their name that one minus one is zero. That's why you wrote it down. But let's be honest, that's not one. That number is not one. It's one minus a different number than one. So if anything, I know it's not zero. One minus negative one is two. The sine of pi is zero. So V of pi is two comma zero. Now we go to find A of T. And then after we have A of T, then I can find A of pi. You take the derivative of V to get A. The derivative of one minus cosine T is sine of T. The derivative of sine of T is cosine of T. The A of pi would be sine of pi, set of T, you plug in pi. Set of T, they give you pi. Cosine of pi. And the sine of pi is zero, and the cosine of pi is negative one. Okay, that problem is done. some information. I'll tell you that a of t is 1, 1, and v of 0 is 0, and r of 0 is also 0. This information is called initial conditions. I want to find r. Well, if I integrate a, I get v. If I integrate v, I get r. Remember, you took the derivative of r, you got v. Take the derivative of v, you get a. Let's go the other direction. Integrate. v of t is the integral of a of t dt. The integral of 1 is t plus a constant. The integral of that 1 is t plus a constant. There's no reason to assume the constants are the same. That's why I called them, I gave them different names. But I can find the constants now by using this information. On one hand, v of 0 is 0 plus c1, which is c1, 0 plus c2, t is 0, remember, 0 plus c2 is c2. But this equals 0, 0. They told me that. So C1 is 0, C2 is 0. So now I update the next to the last line with the information from the last line. It is C1 and C2 are 0. Don't bother adding 0, don't bother adding 0. So V of T is exactly TT. If I integrate again, I'll get R. Integral of T t squared over 2 plus a constant. Integral of t is t squared over 2 plus a, a different constant. And r of 0, well, 0 squared is 0 over 2 is 0 plus c1 is c1. Due to symmetry, that's going to be c2. r of 0 is C1, C2 on one hand. On the other hand, they told us exactly what it was. That is, this must be 0 and that must be 0. That is, don't bother adding the C1, it's 0. Don't bother adding C2, it's 0. So we have R of T exact, exactly correct up here. So R of 2. 2 squared over 2, comma, 2 squared over 2, 2 squared is 4, divided by 2, get 2. Remember, at the very beginning I said, please find R of 2. Well, we did. It's 2, comma, 2. 
No constant. Exactly right. Now let's try one more like this. Suppose you are giving the information a of t is t comma t, which is friendly because when you integrate, you're only going to be integrating the same stuff, t and t. You know how to integrate t, then you know how to in, you know how to integrate that t, then you know how to integrate that t. V1 is 0, 0,5, and R of 1 is 0, 0. And once again, we want to find R of 2. So, we take the integral and we'll, of A, and we'll find B. Integral of t, t squared over 2, plus the constant. Integral of the other t, is t squared over 2, plus a different constant. Okay, well, they tell us about v of 1. Using the formula, using this formula right here, v of 1 is 1 squared, which is 1 over 2, plus c1, 1 over 2, plus c2. That's on one hand. On the other hand, they told us it was 0, 5. That is, this is 0, this is 5. A half plus negative a half is 0. This should be negative a half. And a half plus 4 and a half gives you 5. So C2 is 4 and a half or 9 halves. Okay, so let me update that formula. V of t is t squared. Now, since everything's over 2, it's t squared plus negative 1 or minus 1 over 2, comma, t squared plus 9 over 2. Or you just factor out the 2. Now I can find r. I integrate r of t. It's over 2. We know it's over 2. Integral of t squared is t cubed over 3 minus the integral of good old 1 is t. Integral of t cubed squared, excuse me, is still t cubed over 3 plus the integral of 9 is 9t. And of course, there's a typo because I failed to add in the constants plus c1. Okay, so that's r of t up to a constant. If we find out what the constants are, then we plug in 2. Let me erase most of this. So they told me what r of 1 is. They told me what r of 1 is. Using my formula on the bottom, I get 1 cubed, which is 1 over 3 minus 1. This gets divided by 2 plus a constant. <coughs> Again, 1 cubed over 3 is 1 third plus 9 over 2 plus a constant. This is given to be 0, 0. <coughs> now let me clean it up a bit. 1 is the same as 3 over 3. 1 third minus 3 thirds is negative 2 thirds. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. This gives me negative a third. Negative a third plus c1, comma. A third plus 9, that's 9 and a third, which is 27 plus 1, 28 over 3. And the 28 over 3 gets divided by 2. That is, we multiply by half instead of dividing by 2. You get 14 thirds plus C2. 14 thirds plus C2. And this is supposed to be 0, 0.
okay, well, if this is supposed to be zero, well then C1 is a third. You just have to know your additive inverses. If this sum is zero, then and this is 14 thirds, then C2 is negative 14 thirds. Okay, let me write down the bottom line on the top with the correct information, the new information. We know that R of T is T cubed over 3 minus T, divide that by 2, plus C1, which is 1 third, comma. T cubed over 3, plus 9T over 2, plus C2 can be written as negative 14 thirds. Okay. That's good enough. That's good enough. Because nobody asked us to find R of T. If they did, I would clean it up a bit more. The R of 2. 2 cubed is 8 over 3 minus 2. Divide that by 2, then add a third. Comma. 2 cubed is 8 over 3, plus 2 times 9 is 18 over 2. Then take away 14 thirds. This number is the same as 6 thirds. 8 thirds take away 6 thirds is 2 thirds divided by 2. That's going to give you 1 third. But of course, we add a third to that. And that's going to be two thirds. And eight, eight thirds plus eight thirds, eight, let's try it again. Eight thirds plus eighteen is the same as eighteen and eight thirds. Fifty four plus eight, sixty two over three. Sixty two over three divided by two. And then we take away four thirds. Divide this by two and get thirty one thirds minus fourteen thirds. And now we're done. A third plus a third is two thirds. The bottoms are the same. Thirty one take away fourteen. Seventeen. Seventeen thirds is your answer. R of two, excuse me, R of two is two thirds, comma, seventeen thirds. Your answer needs to be a pair of numbers. Somebody asks you for a vector. And we're only dealing with two dimensional vectors, i's and j's. So I'm going to ask you for a vector in two dimensions, and you say four, and they look at you strangely, because they know that's wrong. It might, you, you, know, you could say two, three, and they're like, well, you know, I wonder if this person's right or not, because maybe they don't have the answer. But if you were to say uh, five, they know you're wrong. Okay. Now, let me work on projectile problems. The formula for projectile problems is V0 cosine of T. No, that's not true at all. Cosine of theta times T, comma, H plus V0 sine of theta T minus 32 t squared minus 16 t squared minus 16, excuse me, this is one half gt. And this is a vector. This is the position of the projectile for the y, tells you the height. This is for the x, tells you how far you are from the beginning, just left and right. 
Now suppose that a baseball is hit from a height of three feet. The ball is hit from a height of three feet. It's hit right there. And here it goes. It just takes off. Boom. It takes off. And the outfielder catches the ball. I'm going to believe this. But at a height of three feet. The, third, the ball player, the field player, doesn't catch the ball on the ground usually. They catch it in the air. You start catching balls on the ground. Empires may not be so sure if you caught the ball before it hit the ground or not. So it's not in your best interest to catch the ball on the ground. And they tell you that you hit the ball at an angle of 45 degrees. That is, it has a horizontal. Just as it leaves the bat, that angle is 45 degrees. But immediately after it leaves the bat, it starts falling down. Gravity's pushing down on that ball really quickly. But nonetheless, it left the bat 45 degree angle. And the outfielder catches the ball 300 feet away. 300 feet away from the bat. And the question is, what is the initial speed of the ball and what's the max height? V0 is how much and what is the max height. Now, if I knew it, the T, here's the max height, okay? If I knew the T value right there, I would find R of T just for the Y value. Just for the Y value, and I'd be done. That would give me the max height. But I don't know the T here. But you know what? I know the velocity. I know the y velocity there. First it goes up, up, up and away. Then it comes. Then it stops. Then it comes back down. It reaches the height when the velocity in the y direction is zero. So I want to take the derivative of t, but I'm just concerned about the y value. Don't bother finding the derivative of the x value. You want to find, but it, it's a waste of time. Okay, so the derivative is the derivative of h is zero. This, this has nothing to do with h's times a t. A constant times t. The derivative is just the constant. But I actually know the angle is pi over four. Minus the derivative of this is thirty-two t. So I get v zero square root of two over two v0 times square root of 2 over 2 minus 32t. And you really shouldn't say it equals 0 because it doesn't. It changes. You want to set it equal to 0. Well, if this minus this is 0, that means those two things are equal. I'm just going to write the square root of 2 first. The square root of 2 v0 over 2, that is equal to 32t. Divide by 32. Divide by 32. So t is the square root of 2 v0 over 64. That's the max time. Problem is, is we don't know v0. We don't know v0. So we can try to find the max height. We could try it. So now, it'll just be in terms of v0. I can find r of r sub y of the square root of 2 v0 over 64. And I just use this piece here. I get v0, the cosine of 45 degrees is this, times t, square root of 2 v0 over 64. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2, which kills off that 2 on the bottom. So the max height is going to occur right here. 
the max height is v0 squared over 64. Now, if I know what V0 is, I'll be able to answer this question, and I'll be able to give an exact answer here. <clears throat> so what is the only, let me erase this. So what is the only thing, now wait one moment, I do want to keep this. I want to keep that value. and possibly the formula. Now, projectiles are symmetric. Now notice everything is at the three feet level. Everything is at the three feet level. This here is halfway. That is, if it takes this long to get halfway, it's going to take twice as long to get the whole way. To go the whole distance, it's going to take twice as long. Now, I know the so R of double this. You double that, the bottom becomes 32. R of square root of 2, V0 over 32. Now, I just want the X component. Because when I plug it in here, I know I'm going to get 300. They told me that. They said the ball goes 300 feet. They said the ball goes 300 feet. From this height back to that height, that's key. You went back to the same height, it's 300 feet. So I get V0, V0, the cosine of pi of pi over 4 or 45 degrees the square root of 2 over 2 times t which is this the square root of 2 v0 over 32 okay square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 it kills off that 2 so in the top you have v0 times v0 is v0 squared divided by 32 this here is 300 that product, 3, 32 times 3, is 96 with two zeros. That must equal to v0 squared. Okay. Now, 96 is 6 times 1,600. The reason I broke it up that, well, I'm planning on taking the square root of both sides to get v0. And the largest number that goes into 9600, sorry about this, you have to know it, is 1600. My goodness, if I can know that, so can you. The square root of 1600, I know, it's 40. The square root of 6, I don't know. Okay, this problem is now over. We now know V0. It is 40 square root of 6. Okay, now believe it or not, we even know V0 squared. It is 9600 and it gets divided by 64. I'll clean that up up here if I can. 9600 divided by 64. Well, 32 goes in here two times and 33 went in there three times. So you have 300 over 2, which is 150. The max height is 150 feet. Okay, that completes the section on velocity and acceleration. Good luck with it. You can do it.